So now that we've talked about kind of the structure and functionality of the client, let's focus in on the implementation of the various client-related classes. And these, again, are the classes that are used to send the requests synchronously from the client test driver over to each of the microservices that we're concerned with in this example. And you can find this in the EX3 project in my WebMVC folder in my Live Lessons GitHub repository. And here we are in the repository. You can see that we're going to go take a look here in the client module. Click down in here into the client portion, and you can see there are three classes. This is the math services client, which is kind of the, the wrapper class that encapsulates the proxies. You can see we auto wire the GCD proxy and the primality proxy. And you can also see that we've got these little wrapper methods that encapsulate calls to the proxies. I, I probably could have gotten rid of this class. It doesn't really provide a whole lot of extra value, but I just wanted to have something that clearly showed we were dealing with client stuff. Let's take a quick look at the way in which we define the uh, bean. I was telling you about the bean before. So this is in the components portion of the client. And you can see that we've got a bean, which is the get, it's, it's the get rest template method, which is a bean that returns a rest template. And there are two things that are important to note here. First of all, um, if we don't have to do connection pooling, we just make a REST template with no parameters, there's no port, port number, there's no host address, there's no protocol. We expect that all to be added later by the proxies, which, which will happen. If we do, however, have connection pooling enabled, then what we're going to do is we're going to use some magic code that I got courtesy of, of Stack Overflow. And it basically makes a connection pool where we're going to bound the number of threads that are going to be open at one time. And the reason for doing this, of course, is we want to avoid the situation where we have lots and lots of threads running around, virtual threads, that would overwhelm the client resources, not from a threading point of view, but from a connection point of view. Now, this particular program doesn't really have that problem, as we'll see, but I like to keep this around here just in case I write code that will have that problem. It's easy to go ahead and enable this by just setting an environment variable, and then boom, I've got a nice connection pool. So that's basically the, the bean that returns the REST template. But assuming we're not using connection pools, it's just an empty REST template with no port, no host, and no protocol. If we want to see protocol, host, and port, we would go over here to the various proxies. And you can see that the proxies have the port numbers defined here, 8081 and 8082. Um, I probably could have made that even more abstract if I put my mind to it. But basically, this is just the, the code we looked at before, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But uh, you can see this code is going to make a new instance of URI Components Builder, make it the HTTP protocol, give it the GCD microservice port, give it the host name, which of course is just going to be localhost for my simple test, because we're kind of mocking here in a way. And then we're going to set the path to be the compute GCD list string. We add the integers, which are we encode using the list to string method that takes a list of objects of type T turns them into a stream of objects of type T, turns each object of type T into a string, and then collects them together using the joining collector to separate them by commas. Again, a very succinct way to do it. There's probably other ways to do that as well using other Java string manipulation mechanisms, but I like that one because it shows off streams. And finally, we build everything, make ourselves a URI string, and then we pass that to the make get request list method. And you can see that takes the rest template, which doesn't have anything to it. It's all going to have to come in through the URI. And then we pass in the GCD result array. So notice again, we're using something that's actually a, uh, a record. So we have a record. We can have an array of records. And the record itself, if you look at it, is nested. So we have a record within a record. So GCD param is also a record. So we've got records within records. And we have arrays of records of records, just showing how orthogonal all this stuff is. Here's the make get request list method, which takes that rest template that doesn't have anything else but just the rest template object, the string, which is the URI. It's really a URI, not a URL. So I should probably fix that. And we then go ahead. I guess actually it is a URL. What am I saying? It's a URL. Let's leave it that way. Um, and uh, so it's going to go ahead and take that URL, and then it's going to go ahead and create a get request with that URL and it passes in the type it expects to get as a result, calls the exchange method on the REST template, which makes the remote invocation to the microservice, 
which was designated in the URL. And then what we get here at the, the end is going to be this response entity. And we get the body of that response entity, which is that array of GCD results. And we convert it into a list by using the list of factory. And then that gets passed back to the client. So I probably should be more consistent and call those things URLs because that really is a URL. Um, and so that's basically what the GCD proxy is. The primality proxy is basically the same thing, fixing URI and URL. And as you can see there, uh, same basic idea, just tweaking a few fields. So that's really all there is to writing this client set of classes that relate to the proxies and what the client's going to use. So now we're going to wrap up with the final part of this lesson.